What's up and good late afternoon, guys? Uh, normally these videos are filmed in the morning and we're opening the garage to the truck, but it's currently late afternoon and we're just getting back to the house and am I the only one that really, really hates this stupid time change BS, why do we need to make it get dark early? It is just seriously a huge hindrance on anybody that works in the trades, anybody that works outdoors, or just anybody in general. Can we get rid of this daylight savings crap? But anyways, enough of my rant. As you guys can see, the garage is a mess, and this time I can finally say it is for a project of my own. Uh, you know, normally I'm so busy building things for other people, doing things for other people that uh, I'm sure every other contractor out there can attest to. Our houses are kind of last. I mean, when it comes down the line of things getting done, we put ourselves last, we put our customers first. So I'm gonna take you upstairs and show you guys what I've been doing in a second But first because I have not filmed in this room yet. We got to have the old Milwaukee lights I'm not sure how the lighting's gonna be and of course we always Support single moms. Yes, it's a pregnant stripper So last time I shot a video here You guys may recall me saying that I'm gonna be turning one of the extra rooms here into work for world headquarters Well, it's not a hundred percent done still a little bit of a work in progress But we've made uh, I guess a huge transition so you guys can uh, check that out I'm gonna cut back to a clip right now of what it looked like before, which will become work for World Headquarters. Right now it's just kind of like extra storage. And I'm sure you're wondering about the giant pink unicorn over there. Uh, won that for my girlfriend at the fair. If you guys want some brownie points, let me tell you, win your girl a giant stuffed animal. Works every time. And now we have the after. And yes, the unicorn still made it. Running a sweet T-shaped desk, which hopefully means there's going to be somebody jumping in to help take care of all these work for orders. And oh shit, cannot show you guys that just yet. Those uh, may or may not be future renderings of the BBB build. We are getting really close to having the completed renderings, guys, and I will be revealing those in a video. Uh, I'm still working on storage and inventory over there, as you can see by my plethora of uh, Milwaukee tools right there. Some sweet shiplap on the wall, and of course, you gotta have a giant TV in the room because nothing says more productive than having a giant TV in your office, which therein lies today's video topic, the 2019 Ram 1500. Now, if you guys remember from my last video when I did the 2019 Chevy review, I was sitting here holding up a uh, printed picture, and well, it's 20 damn 18, so it's time we jump into 21st century, and now we're doing a presentation style. And of course, before I go any further, don't forget to check out the Work For Repair website because the blood, sweat, and tears Work For shirts are back in stock and all the pre-orders have shipped. Anyways, let's jump head first into the looks of the 2019 Ram 1500. And like we noticed with the Chevy, it seems like all of the 1500 trucks coming out these days are more and more car-like in the front end and in the headlight category. The headlights just seem to get smaller. The front end seemed to get way more feminine. And yes, I do still have the sticker on my TV. If you guys watch my live stream, you'll see that I have plastic on a lot of shit in this house. Um, that's just the way I've always lived. Keep myself looking brand new. Now this picture gives us an even better look at the front end and just how feminine um, it really does look. And I don't really know how to explain why it looks so feminine. It's not so much that it looks car-like as it does like the smaller SUVs, which are perfect chick cars. And I think that's kind of what gives at least me, the uh, the real essence of a feminine front end. And of course they carry these same body lines that it seems like Tundra's had first, and now the 2019 Chevy is gonna have, as well as obviously the 2019 Ram 1500. I'd even go as far as to say is this front end, if I did my job right, the picture will change, looks very, very similar to the front end of the 2019 Ford Rangers, um, which kinda, plays into the smaller SUV front end look. Now, if we move our way back along the vehicle, we see this rather large 1500 badge, which normally these kind of, you know, denominations of the truck goes on the door. Seems like Ram opted to put it up on the hood, which is normally where you would put the engine type, the engine size, whatever, um, you know, as Duramax owners, that's where it says Duramax on the truck, but it seems like they put a really large badge there on a really small body line to kind of maximize their space there. Don't know how much I love that, would have to see it in person. Now, coming back, seems like we're still offering the same, uh, I guess you would call them moose tow mirrors, which normally I'm a big fan of tow mirrors. And I think that even when you're not towing on the 2500s, if it's lifted, it looks dumb um, having the mirrors down. These mirrors just don't look good down. They never have, in my opinion. Um, now, that being said, on a truck this size with a small front end, I don't think they're gonna look that good. You know, it almost looks like a couple body styles ago when Ford came out with the really giant elephant tow mirrors for the F-150s, and on a stock F-150 looked horrible. Uh, lifted, it looked a little bit better, but the F-150 still had a larger front end. 
The Ram here does not have a large front end, so I don't know that I would opt for tow mirrors on this vehicle. You know, I'm talking strictly aesthetics wise. Um, obviously, if you're towing, you're going to want the tow mirrors and yada, 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 yada. But aesthetically, smaller mirrors might actually look better on this vehicle. Now, making our way further back on the vehicle, we have what appears to be pre-installed uh, Pet Boys or AutoZone uh, Chrome Shrimp. So for those of you guys that love to raid every single aisle of Chrome crap at Pet Boys and throw it on your truck, Ram went ahead and already did that for you in wrapping the entire window in what looks like a chrome bezel. Uh, not a fan of that. But you guys will enjoy that the B pillars have been blacked out from the factory. I know a lot of guys try and tell me to do that on my trucks. Um, if it's not factory, I'm not a big fan of it, especially because you get a weird body line here. Now this chrome piece does act to kind of break up that body line, whereas if you were to do it on my truck, you would just have to cut the vinyl right there and it looks dumb. It doesn't look factory to me and that's why I haven't done it. Certain trucks can pull it off and it looks great in pictures, but in person it just doesn't look right. Now keep in mind, everything we're discussing on this truck is going to kind of differentiate based on the trim package that you pick. And Ram has six trim packages along with an array of different uh, grills, I think 15 different wheel choices, as well as different choices on a blackout package, on what you do with the trim, the grill. I think there's three or four options when it comes to that. So there's a lot of mix and match that goes on with Ram. And some of you guys like that, but as you guys remember from my review of the 2500 Rams with the ugly front end, um, all those options seem to really look cheap to me. But let's continue our look on the rear end of the Ram truck. And here's where Ram kind of sort of changed, but they didn't do anything too drastic, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Obviously, they kept their dual exhaust with little notches in the bumper, as I had mentioned on the 2019 Chevys, was very reminiscent of the way Ram has been doing it for years. The taillights are a little bit different. The kind of body line here of where the, uh, I guess, bedside kind of flares out is really reminiscent of the Tundra, again. Uh, seems to be like that's the trend. And nothing else really stands out too crazy. Um, the Ram logo looks bigger, which we all know Ram really loves to kind of spell out what the vehicle is. Uh, and the third brake light looks very plain and basic, and then you have your antenna up top. Nothing too crazy on the rear end for Ram. And if we're talking powertrains on these things, you're still getting the similar engines of the past, but they're now using e-torque starter generators. Now, I'm not going to lie and act like I understand 110% what the hell that means. But what that essentially means is when you decelerate, an energy is stored into a battery pack, which is then fed back into the powertrain to deliver the most fuel economy possible. And one of the ways they do that is by helping to maintain cruising speed without having to downshift or upshift, as well as when the engine changes from four-cylinder to eight-cylinder mode. So they're doing a lot of funky stuff in there to really maximize every ounce of fuel economy, which is great for people that are looking for smaller trucks and are really dead set on fuel economy. But as we all know, the true economy lies in when they release the 2019 with the Eco Diesel. And I'm really happy to finally start seeing these automakers releasing diesels in the half-ton trucks, as well as, you know, obviously with the Colorado Diesel, you know, the mid-size trucks, all that. It's about damn time. Now the exterior of this truck is one thing, but the interior is where this truck really shines. And no, the wall color did not change. I had to adjust the camera settings that way this thing showed up in its true color on screen. Um, obviously, let's start out with what kind of stands out huge is the giant infotainment system, which is a giant 12 inch, really similar to Tesla's, which is just a little bit larger and takes up the entire center console. Now I will say, you guys really got on my ass when I drove the 2500 saying your truck sucks, uh, Ram's got the best infotainment center, the best setup going on um, when in terms of controlling the vehicle, controlling the functions, controlling the radio and all that. And I'll give you credit, Ram's is actually really nice and I really enjoyed using the one that I used. So if this is anything similar in terms of ease of use, functionality, um, you know, just having everything where it needs to be in the right place, then this is going to be a really nice setup. And what Ram did really well, um, and I guess kind of to help maximize use of space of the large screen is they allow you to do a split screen. So you can have navigation up top, your radio down below, um, all kinds of different functionalities going on, which is great because having a screen this big, it only makes sense. Now if we move over to the rest of the features of the truck. Obviously Ram kind of kept the sporty styling. Everything just looks really high end. And I do give Ram credit for this. Everything looks like soft touch materials. We have a lot of really nice stitching. I'm not sure exactly what this material um, is supposed to replicate. Obviously the plastic parts are veneered in some type of something. It doesn't quite look like carbon fiber, but it's really hard to make out from these pictures. Um, push button to start, Chevy, where's that? And I really do not like, especially being in a truck, 
this little dial knob to select uh, your gear. I don't know why they do this. Um, to me, a truck is always going to be a truck with a column shifter. Why they opted for this little dial knob to put it in park, drive, whatever, I'm not sure. It's kind of akin to Ford's little dial knob, trailer backing up bullshit. Uh, but whatever. I mean, these are supposed to be for first-time truck buyers. It's supposed to be for new truck buyers or to kind of get people into the entry-level truck market. And so I guess they really want to kind of add in creature comforts or make it feel more like a car. So there you guys have it. The 2019 Ram Ranger. Ah, shit. There you go. The 2019 Ram Ranger Hybrid. Uh, seems like more of these auto manufacturers are kind of crossbreeding the looks of their vehicles. And it could be because the designers are all very similar people. They came from the same school. They sit there and slide into each other's DMs on Instagram. Who knows? But the trucks are really starting to look very similar, at least stealing ideas from each other, which could be nothing more than a big coincidence. Now, it seems like 2019 has been the year of a lot of big upsets for most truck guys. Um, or you may be into these trucks, you know? It just really depends on your opinion. But obviously, these are all the 1500s. Nobody's released the 2500s and up yet. So we're all kind of on edge uh, really waiting to see what they come out with being that uh, we've kind of seen what they've done with the 1500s And I know I'm not too impressed with the body styles, but like I said, that's just my opinion But anyways, I'd really love to hear what you guys think about the 2019 Ram uh, Go ahead and leave your guys' opinions down in the comments. You guys can see my sweet uh, Milwaukee light set up here. Ooh, really bright, really bright Lighting up the, uh, the way, all oh, battery powered as you guys know, I'm on a quest to go completely cordless with uh, all my tools. And if you guys enjoy these types of review videos, let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see more. You know, we're in a time right now where the auto industry is having to do weird things to either keep up with EPA regulations, um, trying to, I guess, capture different markets. They're doing a lot of strange things. So we kind of have a lot of material to, I guess, kind of go over. And now seems to be the time when they're dropping all of their new designs and new ideas. So if you guys are into it, I'll definitely take the time to do more of these review videos. And I just realized how sweaty my face is getting. It is blistering hot in here. Let me turn it down. Fan on. Uh, you know, it's just the rough life of doing these videos. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to check out Work For Apparel. We got Work For Beanies up on the site now. I'll post a link to the website right here. Um, I wish I could show you guys the rendering of the BBB, the Bigger, Better, Better build. Uh, exactly what we're going to be doing to my Denali. But it's a little bit early. There will definitely be a reveal video coming soon. So make sure you guys stay posted for that. And go ahead and click that subscribe button. That way you guys do not miss any of the updates. And as always, if you have not already, please give this video a like, aka a thumbs up. You guys are the best. I really want to take a second to thank you guys. I think we're at 76,000 subscribers now. Um, guys, 100K is just around the corner. And that's all thanks to you guys. I never, never, never thought this channel would blow up so big. You guys are the best for spreading these videos, telling your friends, coming back to all the videos. Um, the guys that get in here first, when the video first drops, I see all you guys. So I really do want to thank you guys. You guys are the best. Till the next video, I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh.